Okay, so now that we're done with our PHP, um, or at least mostly done, um, unless we have any further changes, let's go back to JavaScript. Now, we're going to have to make this Ajax function work with our PHP. Now, luckily, we already have our Ajax URL right over here. Now, let's go ahead and load in some data. Now, we set up this, if you remember, we have this data object that we sent that has the type, the size, and with pocket or not. You can see this directly correlates with here. So now let's go ahead and we have to pass this data in there. Now the only thing this doesn't have in it is our action. So we're going to have to add that. So let's go ahead and add that to our data. I'm going to call this action and we're going to call this action Bed search. Now let's say I, no, I refresh this page. Let's just go ahead and test it, and you can see that action now is in here. Now we want to pass that action uh, to here using a get variable. So let's go ahead and use the jQuery. Ajax function. I love the jQuery Ajax function. I think it's very um, easy to use. And we're going to call this URL. Now, if we remember, we called in this thing called Ajax URL right here. We can actually use that in here. Now, the cool thing about using this Ajax URL is we don't have to put any um, URL um, in here. And this will work no matter where we have. So we have a, a development site, we have a, a theme that we want to sell someone. We don't have to worry about it being specific to that one URL. Now, and then we have data equals data that calls this up here. And we are going to create a success function. And simply call a function right here. It's going to have an attribute called response. And let's go ahead and call our response. And it returns an object. Cool. You can see that it's right here and it actually gets something. Now, let's go ahead and call it another time. And you can see that it called it again. Now it looks like it's calling the same data. Um, so let's go ahead and check our network request and see how it's sending the data. You can see it's sending true. You can see it's sending false. Now the, the only problem is, is we're looking for a zero and a one. So we're going to have to change that in here. So let's go ahead and say, uh, bar with pocket. Let's do a like bar pocket equals zero. And then we're going to do this. So if this is equal to true, then pocket equals one and we'll put pocket right over here. And now let's try this one more time. And let's see what variables are being passed. You can see that this is zero, which is great. And let's pass it one more time. You can see this is one. So let's see actually the responses on this. You can see this is zero, this is nothing. You can see the responses are different, which is just perfect. That's what we need. So the next thing to do is now we have our Ajax all working. We need to actually create this in our uh, GUI. So below the form, we're going to do a quick little list. And of course, um, if this was done a little more professionally, not just a tutorial, I'd put a little bit more style into this. Let's go ahead and just design this a little bit. Title will go here. 
you can see that our list will be right there. Let's just simply remove this. And what we're going to do is we're going to append to this. You can give this an ID, we can call this whatever, um, so it's easier to select if you have a lot of lists for some reason. Uh, but we're just going to look for the UL underneath our bed search. So what we're going to do is um, the first thing we want to do is we want to say uh, bed search find UL and we want to empty it. This is so when we do multiple searches, we simply we empty the empty it before we go and, and write it in there. And then we want to go and write it each time. So let's get all our responses first. So for response, sorry. For var i equals zero, this is a quick little for loop. Response dot link. And let's also console all these responses so we can see what we're working with. Just make sure we're doing it right. So we're only getting one. Let's see if we can find one that has a, a few of them. So we're not getting um, them all because some of them don't have results. There we go. Okay, so we found something that works. No base 180 with uh, with pocket. So let's uh, refresh this. And you can see that actually comes in twice. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. Now it's about taking this information and putting it into here. So what we're going to do is we're going to append some HTML to it. Append it. I like to create an HTML variable to separate things a bit. And we are going to simply And let's look at how this response is. You can see the title is right there. Now let's see if this works. You can see that they both come in here. We're getting more data. So now we want to use this other data in here. Right? So let's go ahead and we can make a link out of this. We can do whatever we whatever we want. And we are going to have to end that. Response i dot tunnel. And let's also add an ID, and we're going to call this bed ID, bed, ID, bed and then uh, I'm going to do the same thing as we did over there. And let's see if it all works. Let's try it with this. You can see that it does change it. 
and let's see how our data actually comes in on our DOM. You can see that our title's there. We have an ID in over here. Uh, we're able to link to these products. And of course, like there's really nothing here. But it does work, and that's the important thing. Anyway, this concludes uh, this tutorial on how to make a, a custom post type Ajax search. Um, thank you for your request. And uh, if you have any further questions, feel free to comment them on these videos. Um, I would appreciate any likes. Um, and if you watch all these, you clearly like some of these tutorials um, and would like me to make more. So feel free to subscribe. The more subscribers I have, I, the more videos I do make. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.